Hello, and welcome to the Orthodontic Products Podcast. I'm your host, Allison Warner. Today, we're kicking off our 2024 season with Dr. Robert Tito Norris. I had the privilege of profiling Dr. Norris for our September 2020 cover story of the magazine, which at the time coincided with the launch of the Norris 2026 passive self-ligating bracket and wire system he developed with Dynaflex. And now we have him back to talk about the systems, products, and technologies he is employing to achieve clinical excellence so efficiently, and how that translates into a better work-life balance. Dr. Norris, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me, Allison. I really appreciate it. Great. So for those in our audience who aren't familiar with you, can you talk about how you got into orthodontics and your current practice? Sure. Well, uh, I guess I got to go all the way back to college. And uh, first of all, I, I should probably say that I'm in treatment myself right now. I have a Mark B. I've got a nice little gap between my two front teeth. And I'm uh, not enunciating as clearly as I might otherwise do. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a big old custom Mark B in the roof of my mouth. Okay. So uh, back to back to college, I was studying mechanical engineering uh, at UT Austin, and uh, you know my whole life I really wanted braces. And for the first time, um, I had a job, I had insurance, and I, and I you know of course I had a little money. And so I went and I got orthodontic treatment while I was in college, and uh, I was just kind of sitting there in the chair when I had this epiphany. It's like you know what orthodontics is just a lot like engineering, just in the mouth, and there's actually a person attached to it. And not only that. That person has, you know, has feelings and has definite, definite uh, emotions attached to their teeth and their smile and so forth. And I, I noticed myself as my tooth became straighter, just becoming more confident uh, in myself and in my smile. And uh, to me, it was an amazing transformation. And the fact that I could kind of use my engineering training and the ability to kind of think in three dimensions and solve three dimensional puzzles um, to, to apply it to this, this profession. So I, I made kind of an about face and I, I, you know, left the college of engineering, went into you know, pre-dent and, um, and was able to, to kind of quickly get those prereqs taken care of. And, and then, you know, sort of like the rest of history, if you will. Um, you know, I have to say that when I was studying engineering, I mean, I could do it, I could force myself to do it, but I didn't love it. And I'll never forget like my first week of dental school when the um, dental anatomy professor assigned us a, a book chapter to read. Uh, and then I, you know, I, I read it and I just was fascinated with uh, you know, the, the anatomy of the teeth and the, the fact that every tooth has a different function in the mouth and a different shape to, uh, to form that function. And so I ended up staying all night you know, up late, I read that whole book that night and that had never happened to me in my educational career where I was just like really passionate about something. And from that point on, dentistry just in orthodontics was just no longer a chore. I mean, it was really, it was a pursuit of a passion that, that I still have uh, to this day. And uh, so, you know, all through dental school, all through uh, orthodontic school, um, I just absolutely love, you know, studying this stuff and, and, and you know, kind of pushing myself to, to learn more and stay on the leading edge of, you know, what's out there. And, um, and that, uh, that's part of what, you know, led me to some of the things I've come up with uh, over the years. Okay. And so you're practicing in San Antonio. Uh, that's, correct. that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. Um, what I want to talk to, I know you have a very busy practice. Um, you're treating over 900 cases annually. You had mentioned, we had talked earlier and you mentioned that. So I want to talk about how you create efficiencies in your office and the systems you've employed to treat kind of with fewer visits while maintaining those, you know, and those impeccable finishes that you want. So what is key to creating that treatment efficiency while maintaining excellent outcomes in your office? I mean, I hate to boil it down to just one word, but it really is just one word, and that's systems. Mm. You know, you've got to have uh, systems from from the for the moment that the patient answers, the, you know, or calls the office. You know, there's a system to how we answer that phone. Uh, there's a very systematic new patient examination because there's a lot of a lot of um, data that we have to collect in a new patient exam. And we, we look very thoroughly uh, into you know things you know what's the position of their skeletal bones what's the you know, what's their airway situation how they're breathing how they're sleeping you know um, we're, we're looking at them you know, facially I love I love David Sarver's uh, you know macro aesthetic mini aesthetic micro aesthetic um, evaluation so we incorporate that into the new patient exam uh, we incorporate 
uh, Bill Robbins' core diagnostic process into the new patient exam. And, and I do have a, a partner and an associate. And so, you know, we each have to have that systematic approach to the way that we uh, assess and diagnose patients. Furthermore, you know, we've had to have systems about, you know, how the braces are placed. And so indirect bonding has been kind of a hallmark. Actually, I've been doing it since residency. Mm-hmm. It really helps, uh, you know, that bracket accuracy, you know, just getting, get those braces on just at the right uh, positions. And that, that has been really, really helpful in terms of uh, creating, um, you know, just, just parity and, and equality in, in terms of our cases, because we all get to look uh, through the same set of eyes at how those brackets should fit the teeth. Uh, and then, uh, and of course, you know, with the advent of, uh, of, a, of a more accurate um, bracket wire interface system and, you know, the, the North system whereby, um, you know, we no longer have all the, all the slop that we had when we were doing an O2 bracket system. We now have a, a, a bracket that actually fits the wires that we like to use. And so, you know, part of that systematic treatment of a patient is to, to treat a patient using three or sometimes four orthotic arch wires, right? So that just really reduces, um, you know, the, the, the number of thumbs in the, in the pie there and, and really helps us maintain our consistency no matter who is treating the patient. Um, you know, we can, we can start them very efficiently. We can, you know, we know exactly what's going to happen, uh, at the next appointment. All those appointments are very systematic and, um, and, and, you know, the data really speaks for itself. And, and that is, if you look at, um, you know, what's published out there through American Journal of Orthodontics and also JCO, you know, to, to get a good finish, you know, on the average is somewhere between 20 and 26 appointments, mm-hmm. um, which is a lot. And so we're, we're treating patients in literally half of those number of appointments. Right now, our, our numbers are 12 appointments for teens and 13 appointments for adults. Okay. And, um, and so that is, uh, that's really key and in, in to kind of keep your eye on the prize and, and look at, okay, you know, how it, it's like a game, right? And, and, and you've got to keep score, right? If you want to win the game, you've got to be able to keep score. So we actually have a column within our, um, you know, EMR, our, our software, and we happen to use Dolphin, um, where we have created a column where you, know, you have to fill in, okay, this is appointment number one, this is appointment number two. So it's pretty easy for us to go back and count those number of appointments. And we're, I mean, we're really focused on that in terms of, you know, how efficiently can we treat every single patient and, and get a great result, right? And because we have to have, uh, go through another set of systems, another set of uh, checklist, if you will, when, before the patient get the braces off, you know, what, what's their size of display and repose? What's their smile, smile art look like? What are the buccal corridors? How's the occlusion? You know, all these little things uh, that we all have to go through the same checklist. And, and that is a system within our practice. Uh, and even after the braces come off, they may start looking at things such as, you know, gingival margins. And we look at, at uh, some of the microaesthetic issues there. You know, what's the coloration of the teeth? We need some bleaching. Did some teeth need some buildups? You know, all those things are, are once again, it's a systematic approach to how we, how we view uh, things. Um, you know, we do have a, a number of aligner patients uh, in our practice as well. And, and of course, you know, that is a fairly efficient way to go, but aligners just can't do everything. Mm-hmm. And so we, that's why we've got embraces. We do a, a number of, of interdisciplinary uh, treatments. In particular, we, we've kind of known for uh, patients who are having airway issues. And in fact, that, that's why I'm in treatment myself as I've okay. developed sleep apnea. Uh, as I turned 50, I kind of developed sleep mm-hmm. apnea. And so now I'm, you know, uh, treating myself. And I'm, I'm, honestly, it's the last 10 nights I've, I've slept better than I have in years and years. Okay. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you mentioned those interdisciplinary cases. Can you talk at what, how does the workflow change? Does the workflow change in any way with those cases to maintain your standards? It, it does. Okay. So one of the things that is uh, is the hallmark of most of our interdisciplinary cases is that a lot of those cases are going to have wear on the teeth. And basically, this is almost half our practice. 50% of our patients are adults. Mm-hmm. And uh, those, those patients that have you know, worn teeth, missing teeth, you know, fractured teeth, whatever. Mm-hmm. The first step is, well, if we're going to evaluate their gingival architecture and see if they have ABE, altered passive eruption. That's usually the first step is to get them back to a periodontist and establish proper gingival architecture. Mm-hmm. And once we have that, then we can go ahead and, and uh, send them to the dentist and have them build up those teeth so that now we're dealing with basically virgin looking teeth, the provisional buildups on those teeth so that now we can use um, 
use that as a three-dimensional blueprint for communication between us and the restorative dentists. Uh, because eventually those teeth are going to be restored with, you know, some long-term provision or something in porcelain usually. Um, but uh, if they can do it in, in composite uh, or, or some other resin uh, ahead of time before they get the braces on, then it really helps us because now we have an accurate incisal edge uh, from which we can measure our bracket position. And it just helps the treatment go so much more efficiently. Furthermore, when you, when you, a lot of these patients have like anterior wear and maybe not quite as much posterior wear. And so when you, when you build up the teeth uh, anteriorly, you're left with kind of a little bit of a posterior open bite because we're going to put mm -hmm. them in some, some bite turbos and so forth. So you're able to use extrusive mechanics, which are much faster than intrusive mechanics, because many, uh, you know, many dentists will say, hey, you know, intrude these teeth for me. Uh, and they talk about the maxillary anterior teeth, give them some restorative space so that they can then go back and lengthen the teeth at the end of the treatment. And we like to do it on the front end where we just restore the teeth uh, on the front end, and then we can extrude the posterior teeth into occlusion, and that's a much uh, more efficient way to treat these patients. And many of these patients finish in under under a year. Oh, okay. So, selecting the the treatments that are you know that are most efficient, and selecting the appliance that's most efficient for each particular case. Okay, but then you have those systems in place where you have kind of that checklist to know what to go through, so that you can maintain that efficiency as you're going through, even if the case is. A little different or a little more complex. Absolutely, um, and, and we've got different checklists for different types of patients. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, we've got a lot of what we do to cuspid substitution. So we have uh, a number of patients who are missing maxillary lateral incisors, and in my practice, we simply don't treat implant implants. We always do cuspid substitution mm -hmm. on these cases. So we have a very systematic checklist of what needs to happen step by step mm -hmm. in order to produce a beautiful smile um, and to do it in a systematic manner. Um, you know, and, there, and there's, there's certain time to wait to each of these different steps and that's everybody in the practice knows it. And you know, we sit down, the assistants know what's going to happen yeah. and, uh, and it really helps things run very smoothly. Can you talk a little bit about what it entailed to set up something like that, a checklist or a system? Can you take an example of one checklist or system you've put in place and what kind of thought process went into it and what kind of data went into creating that? Sure. So uh, let's just take the example we were just talking about. Let's say a, a cuspid substitution case, patient who's missing their maxillary lateral incisors. Okay. So from the new patient exam, I mean, obviously we want to, the, the, the beginning point of the, of, of the treatment is where ultimately, where do you want your maxillary incisors to fit in the face? The maxillary incisors are the central focus of the smile. Okay. And in many of these cases, you know, they need to be maybe even a little bit more forward than where they are right now. And so, you know, um, when we, before we even bond the case, we will go ahead and convert the cuspids to the laterals. And then we'll, we'll basically use some coil springs to push those maxillary teeth um, into the correct position within their smile, both vertically. And then we, we look, uh, you know, not only where they are, you know, uh, up and down, but also left and right and make sure we don't have a cant going on. And, uh, and also AP, you know, we want to have the, the right smile projection of those teeth. And once we get that set, then uh, the next step is for us to basically lock those teeth into place. And we use something we call a Y bar, all right? And it looks like the letter Y goes in the roof of the mouth and it, it, it leverages off of two palatal tads. And this would be a system where, you know, the assistant knows, I mean, step one, they already know that we're going to be doing those, um, those cuspid conversions, okay? And so they have everything set up for us to do the cuspid conversions. You know, step two, they, they know that we're going to be pushing uh, the teeth so they'll have coil springs already ready. Step three, we know we're going to be putting in the Y bar, so they'll have all the, the tads ready for us to insert that. You know, the lab knows how to build the appliance, and the assistants actually deliver those appliances. Um, and then, you know, when we're protracting the posterior teeth, you know, the, the assistant knows you know, we've got to have buttons on all the fours, fives, and sevens to to because we're going to protract from the facial to the lingual. So all of those little steps, this this the team knows. The team knows every single step along the way. How do they know? Because we've done the training. Okay. So we have uh, an in-house you know, one of our lead clinical assistants is our is our clinical trainer, and so we we review these cases and any new patient or any new employee, you know, basically goes through this training manual and knows these steps step by step by step. Okay. So there's really no surprises here, and it, it just um, you know, we have such an amazing, talented team of people because we've we've brought them up that way. We've brought them through the farm league, and now they're playing in the pros. And <laughs> and you know they, I mean, you know, when you're a pro, you, you don't you don't miss a step because mm -hmm. you've you've done it so many times, you've practiced it so many times, 
And so now it's game time. And I mean, you know what needs to be done. Everything's out. Everything's ready to roll. So when I sit down, you know, boom, they just hand me this, 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 and this, and, and uh, you know, I'm out of there. Um, and it's just, it's, it's just simply a matter of training. You've got to have those training and that training has to be systematic. Mm-hmm. And we have different levels of, of expertise among the you know, clinical assistants as well. And everybody has a little ladder or a little, little carrot to get to the next, ne- next level because that next level obviously means better compensation for you when yeah. you master yeah. the clinical um, you know, acumen that, that it takes to do some of these more complicated uh, movements. Yeah. No, a key component of great outcomes and efficiencies is the products and technologies you employ. And as you mentioned, you have developed several orthodontic products over time that do just that. So can you talk about the products and technologies that key to you getting the facial aesthetics and finishes you want when you're treating yeah. patients in your practice? Well, I think that's a great question. I mean, you know, obviously the North bracket has been, you know, the hallmark of our practice here for the last seven years. And, you know, the whole thing, it's, it's all about finishing. And, um, and f- you know, for the first time, we actually have a bracket that fits the wires that we like to use. Most people finish in a 1925 wire. And with a 20 slot bracket, you know, you can get a really nice um, you know, torque control of these teeth, a great rotational control. So it's just really control and finishing what it's all about. And, you know, when I talked about those efficiency numbers in terms of, you know, 12 or 13 appointments, you know, we don't, we don't make up that ground in the, in the first two or three appointments. We make up that ground in the, in the, at the end, in the finishing okay. appointment. Okay. Uh, because the teeth move, you know, you put a little bend in the wire and the, the tooth goes exactly where you want that to be because there's no slop in the system. The system is a very tight, it's the difference between like driving like an old farm truck with a bunch of slack in the steering wheel versus driving like a Formula One race car yeah. where boom, it goes exactly where you need to be. So in a way, this has made us better orthodontists because it's made us better bracket positioners and we've got to be extremely accurate with our, with our bracket positioning. So, you know, first and foremost, it's just, you know, that system right there that of, of, of a smaller O2O bracket system fitting a 1925 wire, um, that's the biggest thing uh, in our practice, okay? Uh, beyond that, I mean, we obviously we live the ART spring. It helps to, you know, control uh, torque a little, little more on the anterior teeth. That's great. Uh, we love the uh, CS springs uh, for class three patients. Um, we love the motion appliance for, for an early, you know, kind of class two type of stuff. Um, and um, yeah, those are those are mostly it. Yeah, you know, the okay. other 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 things. You know, like for instance, we've got a handpiece, uh, multiple handpieces in every chair. You know, that, with light, uh, we've got we've got great lighting. You know, we've got uh, you know suction. We've got you know, great air. I mean, every, every, it's just easy when you sit down because everything is right there. You don't have to ever get up and get anything. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, ergonomically, you know, we did a, a whole thing when I built the office in terms of ergonomics, and I you know, wanted. Every assistant have everything, so we have a lot of duplicity at each chair, mm-hmm. and so, you know, no one ever has to get up to get a plier. You don't have to get up to get a wire. You don't have to get up to get anything because you've yeah. got you know, every unit is self-contained there. So it's not just about having the products in the moment of you know applying the braces or moving a wire. I think it's having everything in place from the instruments to the chair to just be able to get going right then and there. Execute. Okay, yeah. execute right there. Yeah, and yeah. and then it's just there's no delays. Mm-hmm. Um, so that it's yeah, that's a that's a that's a wonderful thing. I think I recently saw a patient in a, in a friend of mine's office. I'm not going to mention his name, but <laughs> oh my gosh, you know the burrs were over there and the handpieces were over there, and, the, and it was just like a madhouse trying to get yeah. you know what I needed down into this one room with this one patient. Yeah. And uh, you know, and I, I realized that yeah, you know. It, it, it's an investment to, to, to have all those things, you know, to have everything in, in each of your treatment rooms. I, yeah. I get it, but it's a one-time expense. And once you have those things, you know, they're going to be there for years and years to come and you're going to save on, you know, just simply time. I mean, that's your most valuable asset. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, what is it? Penny wife, pound foolish or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And uh, and so I'm just more than willing to make those investments to uh, you know for the, for the ergonomic efficiencies that we get out of it as well. Yeah. Well, I was my next question was going to be how does this efficiency tie into profitability? And you kind of talked about there about making that investment up front with your office design and you know making sure you have the resources to accommodate all those patients to begin with. But can you talk a little bit more about how these efficiencies within your treatment have helped with profitability? Well, sure. Um, you know, the, th- the thing is, it, listen, it, it, you know, if you, every case should be kind of broken down to how many appointments did I, 
did it take me to finish that case? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it took you, let's just take an example, let's say a $5,000 case and it took you 10 appointments. Okay. That's $500 per case, right? Mm -hmm. So the same case, $5,000 case, if it took you 20 appointments to treat that case, well, then you made $250 per visit. Mm -hmm. All right. So the efficiency and the profitability is, is pretty obvious. The, 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 the least number of appointments is makes you more profitable. Mm -hmm. And yes, we all care about, you know, profit and so forth, but I'm, I'm just more at this point in my career, I'm more interested about time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, imagine, you know, we have roughly, you know, 2000 patients in treatment, right. Mm -hmm. And we're able to treat those patients with half the number of appointments that we might've otherwise treated or, or they might be treated, you know, in another office. So, so what, I mean, what does that, what does that mean? I mean, that's, that's, that's thousands of appointments that we've saved. And so, what, you know, what do you want to do with that time? Well, mm -hmm. for me, that's more of a life balance type of question. And, and, you know, I, I love what I do. I love orthodontics, but I also love a lot of other things, and, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I love travel, I love skiing, I love my family, you yeah. know, and so it's, it's, it's nice to have that sort of, you know, ability to mm -hmm. have some time off, to sharpen the saw, to go to meetings, to, to do other things it, yeah. i don't feel like i'm i'm just like you know always at the office because i'm not okay well that was going to lead into my next my next question is actually going to be about the fact that you know you do lecture frequently you do conduct in-office courses so i'm guessing these fewer appointments which frees up that time is allowing you to do those things so can you talk about that work and kind of the topics that excite you that you enjoy lecturing on yeah. Well, there's no way that I would be able to do all the other things that I do. I mean, I'm a competitive swimmer. You know, I, I lift weights three days a week. I go surfing on the weekends. You know, I, I, I take 15 weeks off every year, yeah. uh, you know, whether it's at meetings or, or yeah. lecturing or, or whatever. And there's just, there's absolutely no way I could do that stuff if, you know, if I weren't extremely efficient um, at the office. I mean, that's, that's the only way that it's ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I give the courses, you know, when uh, and it, one of the things, I mean, obviously I love to talk about efficiencies. I like to you know, teach people how to be efficient, not only in like how to place the brackets on the teeth, but, but these systems and how to use for your arch wires and all those kinds of things. Um, what excites me uh, most, I mean, honestly, I, I, I love interdisciplinary care and I have for a long time. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, I think it's next level orthodontics. I think it's, uh, you, know, you have to think. Uh, quite a bit uh, on some of these these cases, and um, and some of these can be the most rewarding cases when you're really changing uh, someone's life. If they've got you know missing teeth, worn teeth, and they live like this, and, and uh, they feel like they're almost invisible, mm -hmm. and you, you give them this new big brilliant smile, and they just I mean they're in tears, and they just they feel self confident rather than um, you know self conscious. I mean you can really change someone's someone's life. But I think as as I look at at you know, the future of orthodontics and you know, what's what's on the horizon, what's what's happening. You know, I think the biggest area for growth is going to be in the area of airway friendly orthodontics. Okay, mm -hmm. And I don't want to beat people over the head with this, but my practice has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're helping people in ways that we've never been able to help them before. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, patients come in and, and, you know, we go through a whole exam and, you know, they just came to straighten their teeth and, and they end up you know, improving their airway and they're sleeping better and they're breathing better and their, their life is completely changed, you know, whether it's children or whether it's adults. Yeah. And, you know, now we have those technologies to, to, to help, you know, everybody basically. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of living proof right here with my, you know, with my Marpy going on. I, I'm 57 years old. I'm very hard headed. And, you know, <laughs> I got a skeletal split of, of my maxilla and um, I, I basically resolved my, my sleep apnea here in a, in a relatively short period of time. Yeah. And I, that was unheard of when I graduated from residency 30 years ago, um, and, and that we would be, you know, not just straightening teeth, but really helping people live better lives, live longer. I mean, yeah. statistically speaking, you know, if you can resolve someone's sleep apnea, you've given them 10 years to their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What, you know, what's your most precious, valuable asset? It's time. Mm -hmm. And time on the planet. You've given them 10 more years of life. So, I, you know, for those who have not you know, um, gotten on the, I don't want to say bandwagon, but who have not, you know, gone educated themselves in terms of the, the benefits uh, of a MARPI or a custom MARPI, um, you know, dome procedures, sharpie procedures, those kinds of things. If we're not looking at airway, you're never going to find it. And, and dentists are in a very, dentists and orthodontists are in a very unique position to recognize early signs of airway problems. Right. Okay. 
uh, everything, anything from just like snoring to tooth grinding, okay, you know, open bites, um, you know, tongue thrusts, you know, all these t- kinds of things can have, can tie into that, that airway component. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's one of my favorite lectures to give. And it, it tends to be very eye opening for a lot of patients and, and they go back and they look at their patients in a different, totally different way. Mm-hmm. And, um, and now that we have, you know, all this, all these new tools uh, at our disposal, I mean, orthotics has been through a major uh, um, overhaul here uh, just, just fairly recently. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I know uh, before working on orthodontics magazine, I actually did work on a, um, a sleep medicine museum, uh, magazine. So I'm actually curious, have you incorporated questions about um, sleep habits and breathing into your patient evaluations? Now? Absolutely. And that, that's a similar part of it. Uh, in fact, the Shervine sleep questionnaire is... It's diagnostic. It's actually, um, for instance, remember uh, when you were a general dentist, like if someone brought to you uh, like a, like a bite wing x-ray and it had a, you know, it looked like a cavity, a carious lesion on there. I mean, you were pretty much committed to, and you couldn't ignore it, right? Like you would have to treat that cavity or at least inform the patient that you have a cavity, you know, it needs to be treated or it could turn into a root canal or you could lose a tooth. Mm-hmm. Well, the Shervine sleep questionnaire, which is part of what we do, you know, for kiddos, and, and we have another one for adults. Um, it is a validated instrument. In other words, you know, if, if, if someone answers, you know, you know, eight or more on that Shervine sleep questionnaire, you can send that to an ENT and they can't ignore it. Um, yeah. Because you know, for, for years and years and years, I was trying to do more airway stuff and you know, sending uh, these patients to these local ENTs and they would say, well, yeah, they have class three tonsils, but you know, I've seen bigger, or, no, insurance isn't gonna cover it unless they've had so many infections. Meanwhile, you know, the poor child is, not sleeping, you know, not thriving. Uh, they're struggling. They're their mouth breathing. Uh, it's 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 really uh, it's really been a shame that, that we haven't had the, the support. But we once you kind of educate your your colleagues and align them and, and show them what you can do, and how they can help as well. It's, it's mm-hmm. really really great to have that interdisciplinary team uh, yeah. on board. With everything. Yeah. Um, going back to your lecturing and everything and your in, in, in office courses, do you have anything coming up in the next few months? Absolutely. Well, there's, there's two courses coming up. Uh, one is next month and that's going to be in Scottsdale. Uh, and I'm lecturing with uh, Chad Foster there. And that's oh. going to be focused really more on uh, orthodontic aesthetics and finishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a course that we've given several times and it, uh, the feedback that we've gotten has been, has been really, really positive. Uh, you know, very eye opening for a lot of people. Um, he's got some, uh, got some really, really great, uh, stuff to share. And, and of course uh, we both make some contributions there. And then we do an in-house course twice a year, um, every May and every, um, October. And those can be found uh, on the Dynaflex uh, website. If you just yeah, open up Dynaflex.com, it'll, it'll pop up right there. Perfect. So, well, and that's good. Yeah. yeah. Once you have the two day in-office course and we cover everything from, uh, indirect bonding, uh, Marpy. Uh, even systems within the practice, you know, how to answer the phone. Um, we, we do. We, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we go yeah, through the team that. actually is very much involved in, you know, uh, taking excellent records, uh, you know, uh, Disney level service, uh, team building, training, you know, all, all this is a pretty comprehensive thing. And then we go through airway, we go through um, interdisciplinary care, you know, customer substitutions, all our transplantations. Uh, it's, it's more of a hands on type of thing. So, okay. Well, excellent. Well, Dr. Norris, thank you so much for speaking to me today. I really enjoyed our conversation and um, I hope our audience finds everything you had to say really helpful because I think it was. Um, thank you so much, Allison. It's been a pleasure. Uh, right. Great to see you. Great, great. Yes, great to see you again too. Okay, take care. take care. As always, thank you for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Orthodontic Products Podcast to keep up with the latest episodes and be sure to check out orthodontproductsonline.com to keep up with the latest industry news. Until next time, take care.